Hey guys, BJ on game day back. You got Joshy, you got Brent. Uh, round seven review, round eight preview. Uh, third of the way through the season. Look, it's gone really quick. Scores have been good. Uh, well, for the most part. Uh, Brent, mate, last week, how'd you go, buddy? Hey, mate, ten sixty nine last week. SJ owner was a bit bit of a sting there. Captain wasn't great in cookie. So I think I dropped down about 1,800 spots, which, to be fair, I'll probably take. I maybe expected to drop down a bit more. Um, from what I could see, a lot, a lot of people scoring in that 1,100-plus. So, you know, I'm sitting around that 6,000-ish now. Um, so I'll take that and I'll get back on for next week. What about you, bud? Mate, not too bad. Uh, 11.45. So other than round one where I scored about 800, uh, each week since then has been above 1,100. So... Been pretty happy with that and slowly climbed in the rankings. I think I'm up to about 13,000 now. So considering I started about 80,000, um, yeah, pretty happy. A couple of good performers, mate. Yeah, luckily, me personally, I don't own SJ. Um, Captain Arrow last week just sort of go a little bit of a one from left field considering his form, but uh, managed to score 63 points, which wasn't too bad. Um, mate, overall, yeah, look, no real superstars last week. I don't think... Uh, too many people went massive, massive scores, but I think consistently across the board, everyone scored between about that 1,000 and 1,200. Uh, mate, the, the fa- bogan went all right. To be fair, Sivo probably saved me a week. Yeah, true. true. To be honest. So. He, had a, uh, he had a big game on the wing there. Mm. But, um, mate, crystal ball from last week. None from three, the both of us, mate. We did this one a bit off the cuff. We actually hadn't planned anything last week, guys, so... We sort of did this on the run, and none of us really got anywhere near it. So that that's one we can quickly forget. Into this week's, oh sorry, into last week's reviews. As you can see, the top five scorers, three guys turned up last week: Chn, Corey Harrow, and Nira. Corey will do a massive week for the uh, the cheapy for a manly. So plenty of people who got on him early. Uh, we did uh, recommend him to a couple of our uh, viewers, uh, but unfortunately, nor Brent or I were on that uh, Corey Woodell train. And uh, Maker Steve, as we just mentioned. Uh, did well for, for Para and continues to rise in money. So pretty happy there. Mate, the Roosters on uh, on Thursday, Anzac Day footy, managed to take care of the Dragons. Not exactly a tale of two halves, but the Roosters got out fairly early in the first half, mate, and the Dragons came home in the second. The Roosters at the end of the day, just too good. Yeah, good game. I thought the Dragons were maybe going to try and take it off them at the end there, but late try, Takiyaho. Uh, Roosters just keep on winning. Mate, the second game there, obviously on Anzac Day, Melbourne Storm took on the Warriors. I got to be honest, mate. I, I watched this game and I didn't know what to, what I was watching. The the Warriors with RTS out, bunch of changes everywhere across the field. Basically, fielded what you'd think would be one of their New South Wales Cup sides, to be honest. And uh, they put it to the Storm. Controversial penalty towards the end there, about five minutes to go. Saw the Storm kick a uh, a penalty goal to level up at twelve all, and then they marched down the field on the following set for Brody Croft to kick what was the winning field goal from forty meters out. So no doubt the Storm fans would be happy. No doubt the Warriors fans would be ropeable. I'm a super coach point of view though mate Cameron Smith continues to stand up at what is he 36 years of age now I think yeah and there's some murmurs going around that he you know there's a possibility he might be playing in the Maroons jersey again this year depending on what you you believe and read so form definitely warrants it and interestingly not goal kicking so I don't know what's going on there apparently a bit of hamstring stiffness or quad something I've got no idea but you know it could be the last few weeks actually scoring the tons with a few goals as well so yeah going real good yeah, a little bit of a groin strain there. I think, look, there are some rumours around, obviously, with Cam Smith getting back in the Maroons jersey. Maybe that swan song. I think that probably more centres around the fact that Jake Friend, which was probably going to be the, the guy who replaced him, is, is out for long term. McCulloch really hasn't been firing. Benny Hunt's obviously played the nine at a few different clubs that he's been to, but doesn't seem to sort of step up on that big stage. So that'll be an interesting one. Uh, the Friday game, the uh, the first one we watched there was the Bulldogs and the Cowboys. And uh, the Bulldogs uh, well and truly sort of, I don't know, just controlled that match the whole way against the Cowboys winning 24-12. As you can see there, Corey Harrell, we're nearer. Massive score of 141 points. Got over the line twice for tries and uh, was just brutal across the park off loads tackle bust the whole lot yeah and his base was really solid too yeah, he's, he's an interesting one obviously you know he goes on the radar a bit for people now with that big score and you know he's priced at over 500k but if you have a look at his stats his base isn't too bad when he's playing he didn't start the year with massive minutes but um his base isn't too bad yeah i think you're still definitely chasing points if you get on him now but we'll play round 12 and does have that center wing second row forward duality and can score tries so i think when his base is high i think it's the fact he's getting in doing you know a lot of runs he's 
he's he's really involved there. And a couple of years ago, he had a pretty good year at Penrith there. He had his breakout year as, as a rookie. So, yeah, a bit of an option there for people, mate, potentially. But he was, yeah, well, he was pretty good. Well, 2017 at the Panthers, he did average 59 for the 2017 season. Mm-hmm. So he based that on 72 minutes a game. But he's spot on. From an attacking point of view, he does score tries. He knows how to offload. He runs good lines and plays round 12. So the biggest downfall I can see there is the fact that he's in a Bulldogs team. They've been inconsistent this year. Probably one of the favourites for the Wooden Spoon. The fact that he's got that centre wing duality, I think, puts him ahead of a few other guys that you'd look at in that second row position. Minus 13 break even. So I think if you're going to get him in, this is probably the week. If he does score 60 or 70 this week, then he's going to jump up that 60k and the break even next week will be pretty normal. So I think it's do or die now. If you haven't got him in so far and you do want to, uh, it's got to be this week. Uh, Friday night football, we saw the Rabbitohs take care of the Panthers. Again, the Rabbitohs got off to a bit of a quick start over the Panthers uh, and ended up running out winners 22 points to 18. But, mate, from a footy point of view in general, I thought probably this was Penrith's best game of the season. They seem to be a lot more in control, but they just come up against a a well-drilled Rabideau side, but definitely two teams that obviously uh, could uh, factor in the top eight. Yeah, I didn't actually get to see this game. I was, I was unfortunately, I only saw a couple of bits and pieces of it. From looking at the card there, it just looks like the Rabideaus got away to a bit of a good start on them, and um, Panthers struck back. They didn't score a try until the second half based on this, so had a bit of a slow start, but yeah, Rabideaus just getting the job done, much like the Roosters this year, just winning tends to be a habit. Cody Walker obviously had a really good game again, set up a couple of tries there, scored one for himself, so yeah, I definitely see the Rabideaus the team that's going to be there, probably one of the last four teams of the year, to be honest. I'd be surprised if they weren't, and you know, I'm sort of thinking, who can beat Roosters, Melbourne, or the Rabideaus this year? One thing I do want to point out, I've seen a bit on, on social media about Cody Walker now, anyone who doesn't have now, this guy, 8% ownership, he is a true potter at that price. Basically, if you didn't own him, you sort of can't afford to get him in. But there has been talk from a few people who've got a bit of cash sitting there about buying him in. One thing I would say about Cody Walker, and he's shown it in seasons past, is that he obviously has those brilliant games and he can produce from a super coach point of view, but he does then go into a lull. So I'm tipping probably within the next sort of four to six weeks. Uh, he does play around 12, but I think he might drop back down into that mid 500s. I think if the average goes back down, down to sort of like that mid 50s to mid 60s, he might be a, a get on sort of midway through the season. Well, he scored um, since that, that week, mate, that I was gonna pick him up. He scored over 300 gonna points would've, in three would've, weeks. Would've, he was priced did. at five, 595k that particular yep. week, and he scored over 300 points since then. Filth. Absolute yeah. filth. Gotta be, gotta be. Saturday game, mate. The uh, the West Tigers took care of the Titans. Fourteen nil down they were after about twenty minutes. Mm. Thirty unanswered points, mate. SR Masters was absolutely huge. Did you see this game? No, I saw the second half of this game, and to be honest, it, it was all that that Tigers backline. Um, they got some big outside back. Uh, May Fenua, Jennings, Masters, and and they all stepped up, didn't they? Fenua crossed for a hat trick, if I'm not mistaken. Jennings got a double, and Masters, yeah, he's shown again why he's. You know, one of the premier centres in Supercoach. His goal kicking is not, not very good, though, mate. Yeah, Tigers can't pick him this year. They're just they're getting hammered one week and then putting on something like that the following week. I've got no idea what's doing there, bud. Oh, mate, look, you look at just those two games. You look at that game with the West Tigers over the Titans and then you look at the the Sunday evening game, or Sunday other game with your boys beating the Eels. The Titans smashed the Knights last week. You know, the Eels smashed the Tigers and the roles are reversed. So it's a little bit hard to follow at the moment. But Saturday night, mate, my guys were in the end of an absolute shellacking. The Broncos is far too good. Now... You can make all the excuses you like for the Sharks having injuries, but at the end of the day, you got 17 blokes against 17. you got to perform better than that. The Broncos were obviously good. A couple of their young forwards stepped up and really laid the platform early. I thought Payne Haas was good again. He didn't play big minutes, though, mate. He, uh, there was a bit of talk around that he would play 80, but I think he got that reduced to about sort of 55 or 60. Yeah, and I think Brisbane, there was a lot of pressure on them going into that game. Um, obviously, had only won one game all season. I think they just out enthused early. Got a couple of tries on the board in quick succession. He's lost SJ not too long after that. Sort of threw into tatters. I think you lost someone else, whether it was to HIA or something else. And then you had obviously Nakora was out. I think who was it that was playing that debutant on the wing? Ronaldo's had a shocker. I don't think he caught a ball for the first 30 minutes of the game. Uh, I think Kennedy he, had. I, I think, think he Kennedy. thought he was playing soccer where you're not allowed to use your hands. <laughs> Well, the, com- the think, commentators uh, did the amount they were calling the bloody 
bloke Ronaldo, and it's his first name. Yeah. Even Will Kennedy had a bit of a shocker. I think he thought the footy had spiders on it. He, he was dropping everything as well. So, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a good one for your blokes, but Brisbane were due. You guys have got a massive injury list. Obviously, Wade Graham was already out. Nakora was out that week. Moylan's out. You've now got SJ out. So you've got a lot of lot of big big names due back, mate. So I wouldn't read too much into that one. But uh, quick, Brisbane, quick Brisbane. shout out here to the to the Bogan. Uh, played him last week in uh, in the head to head, and unfortunately he did have Dugan go out. Oh, a, a Dugan's another poor, one. Yeah. Oh, the poor bugger Bogan. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, it basically put his side to shambles. He made he then to to beat me had to make the gamble to put in Garrick over Sevo, so we had a, a, a different player, and that backfired even further. So yeah, Oof. a little bit unlucky on his part. Welcome um, to Super Coach mate. Bogan. Yeah. On Haas, though, on Haas, he still did play sixty yeah. minutes, which is not bad. So I thought with Pengai Junior and Lodge returning, it might have been. Even less minutes, but if he's still yeah. going to get sixty minutes in that side, he is yeah, a, I think a, definitely still an option for your seventeen for one of those last couple spots. I think what we saw there was probably Offa Hengawi was the one who who lost a few minutes, so he probably was down ten or fifteen minutes on uh, on his normal. And and Maddie Gillette as well. He normally an eighty minute player. He only played about sort of fifty to or I think it was about fifty eight minutes or something like that. So it looks like Payne Hass will keep that sort of high. A range of minutes, and he looks good. He looks like a, he's a he's a handful. So, mate, Sunday afternoon footy uh, at Lotto Land, Manly Seagulls got over the Raiders twenty four twenty. This was an absolute cracker of a game. I, I I love watching this game, and I think it just goes to show how good you know Sunday Arvo footy is. Yeah, everyone's got the day off. Everyone can just sort of sit back and watch it, whether you're at the stadium or whether you're uh, sitting at home watching the TV with a couple of mates. But um, the footy was good from both teams. I'm sure a few super coaches are, are devastated with uh, Jordan Rapana going down with that rib injury. <laughs> that should only be short term. He's out this week, but he should be back next week. And obviously DCE, mate. The halves of the Queensland might have just sort of narrowed up a bit because uh, he looks to be out for sort of six to ten weeks. Yeah, big one there. Absolutely. And amazing that Manly managed to win that game. Considering they were down early and Canberra looking really good. And then, yeah, they lost DCE and was still the game was in the balance. So, can't be against the Raiders in form. I know it was that lot of the end, but, you know, based on what I've seen from Manly this year, I did not expect them to win that game. And they did. Yeah, massive, massive effort from those guys. Yeah, obviously, Waddell had a massive game, mate. As we said, with someone in the comments saying they were tossing up between Whitbread and Waddell and... Uh, Modell's probably had the best game of the season. I think he had a couple of hand in a couple of tries. He played 60 minutes, was the most minutes he's played all season. His base was solid, so uh, he had a cracker as well, mate. Yeah, definitely. Mate, explain to me, all boys, <laughs> how do they go from what they did against the Titans to completely dominating a match? And, mate, let's just talk about this sort of form reversal or, I guess, lack of form, because at the end of the day, if you're a tipster, how can you follow these results? I guess one funny thing about it is whenever a team gets belted, they generally bounce back the week after, you know, unless they've been a really shit team like the Knights have been the last few years ago. But I don't know. To be fair, the Titans game was probably the worst we've dished up all year. Uh, all the other losses we copped throughout the year, you know, those first few losses were, you know, between two to eight points or something like that. So... Whilst we weren't getting the job done, we were still close. We just got out the gates early and sell shocked Para. Got away to a 20 0 lead pretty quickly. So we do have a quality side on paper. If you let us get away, there's every chance we'll hurt you. I think we did we did well to hold on. I was a bit concerned we might have let him back in there because the game was still sort of in the balance there for a little while. But I, I was stoked. I didn't expect it on the Sunday Arvo, to be honest, based on you know how good Parra were the week before. And guys like Gartho and Moses essentially went missing. Right. So, yeah, really happy. Ten minutes in, Ponga sitting on, what was he, mid-30s probably by then? What, what were you thinking? Should have set the bloke as captain and just ease the set and forget captain. I think he'll and go close to top nothing. scoring this year. Yeah, I still think there's times where they could probably go on to him a bit too much and even times where Pierce is just trying a little bit too hard. But can't complain, mate. He's still... I think the last four weeks or last three weeks he's gone 80 plus and then 60, I think it was 60 this week. So, you know, you can't complain. That's that's good points. Uh, and then this week's games, um, got Rabbitohs and Broncos. Oh, Bennett and Seabold, that'll be a cracker of a game Thursday night. 
I like the favourites this way. Actually, I remember I put my tips in earlier this week and I just sort of went all the favourites. I think Sharks are going to get touched up by the storm by 30 or 40. We're just, we're just not a good team. Not to say we can't compete for the trophy. I think once we get all our blokes back, I think uh, the Sharks will be a force to be reckoned with. But uh, for now, mate, uh, anything you're looking forward to next week? Well, that Brisbane Rabbits game will be a good one. Interesting one with the battle of the coaches there. Obviously, Brisbane have named this, this young half, Dredden. Uh, the debut so hearing lots of things about him he's only a little fella but apparently he's one to look out for and yeah obviously the speculation with what's going on with Nicarima maybe to the Warriors I'm hearing James Roberts might be dropped for this game but I've since read that, that apparently Seabold doesn't know anything of it if you believe what you read he might be off to the rabbits sooner rather than later I'm also reading that Jaden Sewer might be uh, playing nine and McCulloch's They've potentially got an issue with McCulloch at nine for, for whatever reason. So, yeah, plenty happening in that one. And, yeah, I just think given the the battle of the coaches there, it'd be, be good to see that one. Shame about the injuries between your boys and Storm because that could have been a really good matchup. Otherwise, I guess yeah, it's a bit of a weird round. I think Canberra-Penrith could be a good game. I think there'll be lots of points scored in a lot of these games, to be honest, mate. It feels like that sort of a round. Uh, moving on from there, Casualty Ward. Um, yeah, as we mentioned, obviously DCE went down with an injury last week. Um, Josh Dugan was obviously injured before the game. Sean Johnson went out. Sean Johnson probably expecting four to six weeks out there with a hamstring. Um, mate, there's a lot of hammies going in these games lately. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, good question. It's sort of like, it's weird, you know, there's always this, there was one year where everyone was getting the syndesmosis and and there was one year everyone was doing pecs. Um, I don't know. It's got to be something they're doing in their training or they're too much weights or I don't know, mate. It's it's bizarre. It can't be surely to a lack of, of warm-up. They spend God knows how long warming up each before each game. So I don't know. Maybe it's the, the turf, you know, the ground. Uh, great. I've got I've got nothing. But yeah, yeah obviously a few big outs this week with um obviously DCE, SJ Rapana's out. Um yeah, so gonna start to probably test a few people there, super coach wise. I mean if you're an SJ owner, what do you do? Um I personally think he's a trade given he's due back around round twelve, but he won't actually yep. play round twelve. So he's probably five weeks out if you believe that. Um yeah, so Joshy anyway, Reynolds was another one who was injured yeah, over the weekend. Reynolds. Now, obviously not as as relevant super coach wise a lot of other players, but um, I did notice a few people put up that they got his minus three score from the weekend. Uh, so pretty unfortunate there if you had him. Um, but yeah, uh, let's lead into. Yep. No, you're right, and, she- and she- yeah, hopefully Shecky back this week for those people who got Sheck. Yeah, obviously, uh, RTS named uh, was a late withdrawal last week. And one of the things I, th- I sort of saw funny, you know, obviously the rumours came about and once the rumours start to come about, they're generally fairly true. Uh, but Stephen Carney denied it, you know, pretty uh, aggressively. But, uh, yeah, he was out as the rumours sort of predicted. But uh, named it fullback this week, so hopefully he can start for his owners. Um but, yeah, speaking of that, uh, we'll bring him up a little bit more in the trading floor. So let's move to that one. Change places! Change places! All right. So whose trades we got up first? Hampton. Yeah, so, you, mate, so what did you end up doing? It's obviously the host out, Haas in. Host ended up getting named to start, but it doesn't matter. I think it was only temporary. Um, Haas went well, made a fair bit of cash this week, happy with that. Well, I ended up going the trail. I, I wasn't going to because he got named at six, but Liam ended up getting brought into the, the starting side, I think it was, and they shifted the trail back out to the centres. Look, it ended up being a better trade than Le Lua. Had he not had that try disallowed for the obstruction, I don't know if you saw it, Joshy, but he potentially scores a... 80 plus, maybe, if not more. So that one's stung, stung a little bit, but pretty happy to have Mitchell in now. I just think, you know, once he hits a bit of form, he's he, go, he gets red hot. So got him in now. Don't have to worry about it. He's bounced back up near 600K. They play the Tigers this week. Let's, yeah, it's done now. Don't have to worry. And obviously you, you got rid of Ravalawa, mate. Anyone who does have him, look, this guy's just a sell. They don't play 12. 
Um, you and Aiken surprisingly have been named on the bench. Zach Lomax to uh, to the centres and Ravalawa has got that weak spot. But um, I don't think that'll hold true long because if you and Aiken needed a wake-up call, a band drop to the bench, uh, this week might be it where he forces himself back in. Absolutely, mate. And I think once Ravagash got named on the bench, you had to get rid of him. He already, already was a semi-sell, but I have no idea what was going on there. I, I, I'm not sold that Aiken will actually start on the bench still. I think it could just be nah. one of those things to give him a bit of a wake-up call. But Rava, definitely, if you haven't sold him, start thinking about because he could start to leak a bit of cash now. He's got that 10 in his, his rolling average. Yep. So you, uh, mate? Next page here. Mate, uh, these were my trades last week and I actually went with these. Um, Tavita Totola came out for Payne Haas. Again, just sort of a money grab there, but this bloke could turn into a keeper if he keeps playing sort of 60 minutes. He's a big body, plenty of athletic ability. Obviously, he just needs to develop as a footballer. And, yeah, this will be, bloke will be a star for the next 10 years. Uh, the other one, now, I dropped Jordan Pereira, and I went Wanga Blake. A little bit of a sort of pod search here. I was trying to get someone who, obviously, most people wouldn't have. I didn't actually count on him switching him from the right side to the left side. There were glimpses. There were some amazing sort of things between him and Kikau, but at the end of the day, he just didn't put the points on the board for Supercoach. Only scored 31. Uh, Pereira scored 43, so he's just going to start dropping cash now, but... I made my 100-plus grand out of him, so I'm pretty happy there. Wanga Blake, he only dropped about five grand. So at the end of the day, he is bargain basement for a bloke of his ability. And I think in coming weeks, plays round 12, obviously, with the Penrith Panthers, I think he can start to perform again. I would like to see him back on that right side. So I'm hoping once Dean Dean Fare comes back, that switch will happen. But for now, yeah, it'd just be nice to see him cross the stripe again. Oh, I, I think solid pick anyway. He's still, he's probably bottomed out. I think he's now, his break even was around 30 to 40. And the, the next month, the next five weeks is not bad at all either, leading into the buy. So I still think he's a really good pot. And if nothing else, he's due and he can go big. So I reckon, mate, you're not far off something there with Blake. And yeah, credit to you. Sticking with him, I didn't week, think you are going to stick with that one. Yeah, I've got a, about a thousand. Look, oh, I think wow. I, as I alluded to, was a sell. I just think he's too much. You know, he dropped a lot of cash as well in that injury. It was a bit of a pain. He had a seventy eighty reg even, so that stung a bit. Yeah, I got the coverage there. Um, I can I can bring in Crichton by Jules. I know Crichton won't play round twelve, but again, I just think this is going to be a guy that. How the fuck do you bring in Crichton via Jules to get a halfback in? Yeah, good call. So I've got KP, Kalen Ponga at uh, fullback at the moment with Teddy. So I've got yeah. SJ at six. I can swap SJ, um, take SJ out, KP goes up. Chance yep. that Clockstad can go into fullback. I've got yep. Bateman currently in my second row forwards, and I can swap him down uh, to the centres. Yeah, gotcha. But uh, it was always like a Kumba or Catewell or Bateman. I just happened to have Bateman up there at the moment. So now yep. all of those dual second rowers, second centre wings are all going to be down in my centre wings. Yeah, uh, I just think yep. Crichton's now hasn't gone awesome, but I think he's at that price that I'm happy to get him in again. I think he's going to be a guy that I'll have till the end. He's just over 550. Break Evans not too bad, and he's starting to find the try line. I think he hasn't even really chimed in that well yet. I think it's not far away. Tigers this week. Bit of a risk picking up a guy that's definitely going to play Origin, but yeah, he's one of the young bucks of the comp that, um, yeah, happy to get him in. Doesn't play 12. And then Kate, well, I think 80 break even. He's done the job I want him to do. Price at about four, just over 500K. So, yeah, I was gonna, I'm looking at about six different blokes. <laughs> I could go Lay Lua like I wanted to. I'm an Aaron. I'm leaning towards Croker. I think Croker's a nice price. He just doesn't have that, that natural. I guess you know he's a he's a technical centre. He's not a he's not going to palm suck five blokes off and run over the top of them and outrun someone. But he's just really good with his positioning and obviously his goal kicking. And yeah, he's he's not too bad of a price and a break even. I, I can go Masters. I could go CHN. Um, I could get another. I can get a jewel down there. I've got some other jewel I must have where I could go a lane or to power. So I've just got lots of options. I'm just trying to think which the right one is. I'd love to go Masters, but the Tigers have probably got the worst three weeks of the competition in the next three rounds. The Tigers played like, geez, I can't remember what it was. I just looked at their draw. 
let me bring it up here. And it was disgusting. Otherwise, I'd probably just bring in Hassan. So they play the Roosters this week, Penrith the week after, the Storm the week after that, then the Rabbits, and they've got the bye. Jeez. So it's an ugly month of footy, and then you don't have him yeah. for 12. So I think I'm just off him. I'd love to have gone him. If had they had any other sort of draw, I probably would have. Yep. Um, so at this stage, I'm leaning towards Croker, but yeah, we'll see what happens. This McCulloch thing spooked me a bit as well. Um, apparently, he might not be playing nine, so might be having to sort something out there. But yeah, I don't know, mate. That's it's anyone. That's what you do. You Fair don't enough. tell them what who it's going to be. You just say it's anyone. And that's how you get away with it. <laughs> you, bud, mate. The the trays are about to come up on the screen. Fucking forget them. I've got no idea. I've got absolutely no idea. Look, I thought about host Flegler, Holland. They're a few of my weak links. Um, and you'll see there, three Manly Seagulls. They all play 12. Waddell I like. Look, I, there's a lot of talk around whether this guy, you, you know, whether you're too late. The fact is the guy's got a minus 58 break even. He looks good when he's on the footy field. He looks active. He's hungry to play footy. The try that he set up for Marty last week wasn't a fluke. This guy can ball play as well as just run and hit up and, and defend well. So definitely one to look out. You know, whether you jump on him now and hold him till 12, you know, hopefully he can get some scores in there. But, yeah, I'm not too sure. Marty to power. Probably the reason behind this is most weeks where I'm close in the head-to-head, he just seems to be one guy that I don't have that I wish I did. Again, whether that's a pod or you know, whether you just follow the crowd, I'm not too sure. But... One guy out of the Sea Eagles that I absolutely love is Manasi Finu. Now, this guy started the season 580,000. He is down to 440. He is an absolute weapon. He, he just, his vision on the field is awesome. With Appy Corusau there, I've got no idea what kind of job security, not so much job security, but the minutes that he's going to be guaranteed. One week he seems to play 30, the next it's 40, the next it's 50 then it's back to 30. So if there can be a little bit more consistency, I was hoping this week with DCE out that they'd actually name Appy at six rather than LG come back in and um, Manasi might get 80 minutes at hooker. If that was the case, he'd be straight in my team. Holland, uh, definitely out. But what I've also been thinking about is maybe RTS. Thinking of getting rid of either Dylan Brown or Chanel Harris-Tavita. Again, I've held Dylan Brown this long. Do I just keep holding him for 12? There's the chance that he comes back before then. Eels play 12. Jamin Salmon really hasn't done much. So does Dylan Brown just come straight back in the team? Maybe he does. Harris Tavita, there's arguments there that with Nick Aruma going over there next week, if that tends to be true, maybe he's just a hole for another week. Basically, I've got no fucking idea. I think it could be one of those weeks where you realise we don't have enough trades to trade every week to get us to the end of the year. Do I just not trade at all? So... Guys, what you see there on the screen, yeah, it's definitely not going to happen. Uh, could well do still, uh, but I'll keep everyone posted via the Facebook page, by the YouTube comments. I'll get Brent to chuck them up on Twitter when I do actually decide what I want to do. Uh, but for now, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Super coach fortune teller. What do we got this week, mate? I- I've gone a bit safe this week. I've yeah, I've gone a little bit safe. We go. We're just going to carry over with the. With the wheat mix, with the Tabasco, we might do it. Do you want to do a shot of tequila or along with it afterwards? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, jackpot every week. Oh Jesus Christ! If we go ten weeks straight, it'd be like winning the skins at golf. If you jackpotted every hole, that show will be off the hook. Uh, mate, to turn up, I've gone a safe one here with James Tedesco. I reckon um, he's due. Uh, he's playing the West Tigers. His former team. I think everything just adds up here. I'm I'm pretty keen on Teddy this week to turn up and. Uh, I'll be having the big C on him this week. Back to what was the set and forget. I've changed it a couple of weeks, but uh, we'll go back on Teddy this week. Mate, the redemption arc, I've gone with John Sutton now. I think he scored about 35 or so last week. The, the Bunnies and Broncos games always seem to be cracking games, and I think this this year will be even more so, obviously, with uh, Seabold and Bennett switching places. And if this young Tom did and starts for the Broncos, he will be playing on that right-hand side, and Johnny Sutton could just have an absolute field day. I've heard that this guy is uh, is weak uh, in defence, 
and even from a Queensland Cup point of view. So I'm tipping Johnny Sutton can actually crack the 75 and uh, and uh, he can be run my redemption for the week, mate. What are your thoughts there, Hampton? Oh, look, I don't think they're picking Dreden uh, for defence. So, or Dearden, whatever his name is. He's probably 40 kilos ringing wet by the looks of him. Um, so, yeah, some plausibility there. I reckon Sutton is... I don't know what his minutes have been like, but he's probably due for a pie. I don't think he's crossed this year. So if you get a pie, he might go close. I don't know. Again, what's his minutes been like? Let me go. Supercoach, NRL Supercoach stats. Yeah. No, his minutes haven't been too bad. Yeah, we'll see. He has not. He scored about 50 once all year. So, yeah. So we'll he's see. due. So he's, he's so definitely he's due. due. He's dead set due. He's, he's, he's priced well if anyone wants to get on him. 381k. Johnny Sutton hasn't been 381k since 2015. So get on. <laughs> get on. Get around him. <laughs> and the wild and wacky, I've got to be honest, I've got no idea. Oh, I went, Bogan, you're supposed to write this up there. I can't remember what I went. I went a little league. I went, what did I go? I went four, four blokes against four blokes. I've gone the mini fellas. I've gone like Damien Cook. Mitch Rain, Ben Hunt, Brody Croft, and on their squad would have been Sam Burgess, Tyson, Fidel, Jay Arrow. Who else we got? No, nah, keep going, Bug. All good. What's the fourth one? Nelson the Soft of Solomona. So oh, basically, fuck. that's my wild wacky. Is these Give four me a break. What are you talking about? Cook will outscore all four of them. Come on. I've, I've, Who I've, are the first uh, one? Cook. Mitch Drain. Drain ben, is Ben and Hunt. Oh. Well, that's got to go up to the bunker, surely. That's... That's about a dollar. Oh, that's about a dollar ten. That that four. Is, Give them the comments. Is, write yeah. them up. Write them up who they are in the comments. The only I, thing that might save me is that Hunt might not play this week. I told you I'd go and save. I told you I'd go and save. Look at this. <laughs> We're going upstairs. Look at this. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. This What's is the, the first result? I've heard of this, and I'm just look, I'm up just going to look up some. I'm just going to look up some stats. This is the first you've heard. You're full of shit, Hampton. You've stitched me up here with the bogan. Burgess, Nass, Arrow, and who was the other Arrow? one? Arrow. Frizzell. Oh. Jeez All right, Louise. I'm so I might be... Oh, I've gone Croft. <laughs> Croft can't score 20 points. Uh, Arrow, is Arrow even playing 40 minutes a week? Mate, he's due. I put him as captain <laughs> last week. He's due. Uh, his minutes. Uh, uh, not... All right. So, oh, Arrow, Bur- Burgess, maybe. Arrow, and Frizzell maybe. all seem to be consistent scorers. So, yeah. we're going to let that one stand. There you all go. Right. All right. See? Look, maybe I go. might be more harsh, and maybe I could be eating my words next week, and you'll be eating wheat bix with Tabasco as a result, and that'll be fine. And tequila. Uh, yeah. what do you well, got, I need it in front of me. See you, uh, yeah, yeah, so really interesting. Obviously, we don't talk to each other about this, mate. And I've gone oh, to the ton up also. Um, so that one's going to be cancelled out. And I will likely go Teddy as captain this week as well, based on that. Obviously, I'm, I don't okay. know. I'm, I still want to go Ponga, maybe against the, the I Warriors. Him first. You can't have him. <laughs> I think I'm, I might vice Teddy C Ponga, depending on what the weather is like in New Zealand. Because you've always got to be wary of it in New Zealand. Uh, I've gone to Pooh. Obviously, I think that he didn't score. He scored less than 40 last week. And I think that the Roosters might put on a bit of a cricket score in this one. That being said, I think the Tigers outside backs, I don't know how they're having so many points put on them. They've got a not a bad squad on paper. And the outside backs are huge. But, yeah, they're just not defending too well at the moment. You know, a better team would have probably put them to the sword. After the start, the Titans had last week. So I'm, I'm tipping Tupu probably crosses for one, if not two, and cracks the 75 barrier. And the wild and wacky. So this is proper wild and wacky. So the fixtures for this week. So the first four games of the round, Joshy. 
So yeah. Rabbitohs, Brisbane, Cowboys, Titans, Cronulla, Storm, Raiders, Penrith. I'm predicting that for well for those fixtures, they'll score. Well, it should be the, the best way to explain it is for the the last four fixtures that are around, which is Seagulls, Dogs, Roosters, Tigers, Warriors, Knights, and Eels, Dragons. There'll be oh, what more are you than talking about more than double the total amounts points scored in the last four games and the first four what games. What the fuck is there was super coach? None of this has anything to do with super coach. It's a fucking super coach show. Last week, I did all the ones with the margin of the games. It was going to be by less than six points. No one pulled me up on that. Fuck it. I thought you would have learned your lesson. I thought I didn't have to tell you. I didn't know. I, I reckon this, this wild and wacky one is exactly that. It's wild Ludicrous. and wacky super coach. Fuck all right. Well, is. let me. All right. all right. Let's just do it for. So what, hey, wait, wait. No, no, no. Let's, let's hold it. Let's hold it. What are you going? What you, so the, first the last four game. games of the round, there'll be twice as many points scored than the first four games. The last four, twice as many points. Double the amount of points, total points scored. Sorry, I'm g- going, going live again. The, uh, the text that Brent sent me yesterday was, the total amount of points scored in the last four games of the round will be more than double that of the first four games' total points. All right. I understand. So if there's 50 points scored in the first four games. Like you total need 101 those. better in the next four. Yeah, I gotcha. Let's be honest. There's probably no chance, but I'm struggling to think of things for this bloody segment. You're yeah, killing it's, me. It's a little bit hard. It's a little bit hard. All right. What have we got after uh, Crystal Ball? Topic gate. Right. What's topic number one? Bye, Planner. Yeah, I write these recaps up and then I leave the sheet at work and I've got no idea what I was thinking about when I wrote it. There's now four weeks until that first buy round or you know, four yeah, right. weeks worth of trades. How many, how many trades is the right amount? You, you Surely you can't have 17 and expect in round 16 or 17 or whenever the second buy is to have 17 as well. You just can't do it. I think 12, 12 is probably not bad. If you've got any more than that, 13, 14, you're probably doing well. Really? Yeah. Uh, I sorry, seriously reckon. Sorry, gents, I'm live again. Um, the exact wording for Topic 8 written up by Joshy. The casualty list grows longer for some teams and concern surrounds who plays 12, Origin, or misses both. DC gone for your halves in the, re- the round 12 bye. Will Dylan Brown be back? Does Mitch Moses put pressure on Cleary and Maloney to remain a unit? Can Ash Taylor step up? Is Whiten an option? Yeah, gotcha. That's what I was thinking about. Basically, what I was looking at was obviously when you've got the buy planner, you look at, um, let's say you've got Damian Cook and Cameron Smith as your hooker pairing. Well, the fact is that Cameron Smith's not going to play 12. Damian Cook's going to play Origin. You've got no number nine. Same thing in the halves. At the moment, the way I look at round 12 with the teams that are playing, there's no viable option to say, yeah, I'm going to score 60 or 70 points, or I want to keep this guy for more than one week. Now that DCE's out, obviously if DCE wasn't named in origin, he'd be the one you'd look at. What do you think, mate? Obviously, when it comes to those positions where you've got guys, is it worth burning a trade to, to get a guy in for just that week? Look, I reckon you're better off not burning trades trying to get ready for 12 because there's going to be some guys you can bring in from 13 onwards that will be able to stay in your team for the rest of the year if you want them to. You know, assuming Cameron Smith doesn't play Origin, which you have to assume he's not, after that round 12 bye, you you bring him in, he's probably set and forget, um, or at least until that second bye. And there's probably, I think, a lot of the guns will play Origin. Um, you know, you think of guys like Jai Arrow. Um, it looks like Cameron Murray this year could be one. Um, Jakey Trebojevic, Cleary, um, Ponga, Munster, uh, you know, Tedesco, Mitchell, the list just goes on. Um, so I think if you've got those guys in your team now, which I, t- I feel like I've got a lot of them, uh, you can't... 
I don't think you can trade him out. Um, what you're better off doing is trying to just, you know, tinker around the edges with those guys that you do have at the moment that you are going to trade over the next few weeks anyway and just bring in, you know, your Sean Lanes and a um, um, few of those Raiders players and that sort of thing. And I think it's more important to prepare, you know, post round 12 personally. That's just what I think. Um I'm looking at my team. I think at the moment I might have seven or something like that off, at, off the top of my head, um, seven or eight. And there's a few guys coming around the corner. Um, you know, that Caleb Aitkins from the Panthers is probably going to be one to get on next week, assuming he keeps his spot. Um, there's guys you can get in like Burgess to power uh, that won't play Origin at all. Um so, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So, what do you reckon? Well, at the moment, I've got 10 players that are playing mm-hmm. by round 12. Uh, but that includes blokes like Ockenbohr, Allen, Sebo. You know, I've got the centre wings covered. Um, mm. And that's what I'm probably looking Bateman. for over the next four to four weeks. Uh, but, Bateman, yeah, Bateman, CMK. obviously... The, the guys I'm sort of regretting not having coming into 12, especially with the form they've shown of the blokes like Burgess, um, Semi Burgess, uh, Cameron Murray, huge one. I think uh, he's probably been the best player in Supercoach so far this season. Definitely the most consistent. Um, I reckon again, he plays I think he's part of He's part of the, one of the topics we're going to talk about in a second. Um, yeah, we'll talk about him in a second. But, um, yeah, look, I reckon coming into the buy planner, I'm going to aim for 14 players. I think if we can get 14 on the park and try and get to sort of that, you know, 850, 900 mark, uh, I reckon that'll see me go up in the rankings a fair bit. Yeah, agreed. I think 800 would be a good round 12 score. Anything above that's solid. Second topic, what have we got? This week okay. seems to be a good yep. one to take Teddy. With the Tigers' defence showing massive laps in games, can Teddy take charge and ton up against his old club? Does Damian Cook start off with a bang against the inconsistent Broncos, or does, or does Cam Smith lead the storm to destroy the injury-depleted Sharks? Were you live then, Bogan? Yep. I like your YouTube voice, mate. That's a good voice. Very strong. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain, look, um, I think it's going to be some common captains this week. A lot of people are going to go, Teddy, vice captain's going to be you know, cookie, depending on obviously, basically the Broncos are looking terrible and, and the Bunnies are going all right. And whether the Broncos can continue the form they started to show against Cronulla last week. And those who do have Cameron Smith may want to sort of take that gamble because Cronulla do look terrible at the moment. So either one of those, mate, thoughts? Yeah, um, I'm thinking the same. You either go cookie the vice on the, fr- on the Thursday or you either chuck it on Teddy. If you don't captain him, I'm looking at Ponga. Just have to check that weather. All right, well, let's use your 10% wisely. Let's go to the next one. Let's let's roll through these. Return of the King, King Gutho. Uh, shit week last week for this bloke. I think he scored 29 points. Shout out to Dan Nichols at work who captained him. You're a legend. <laughs> um, let's talk about, obviously, contracts. Again, another topic we're going to talk about is the Eels and all the contract off-contract players. Is there any truth behind this? Off-contract players that play better? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's, it just happens so often that guys hit form that... They must. Um, like, what else can it be? I guess if you need, you're not worried about getting paid, you're probably going to start playing a little bit better. What I find interesting is, you know, someone like Gutho, who's so been so influential for Parramatta, how they haven't wanted to throw money at him to keep him. Um, he's now potentially been offered some big money from Manly. Um, so depending on what you believe, I, I think, I think there's some truth to it, definitely, but. Uh, I don't know, like, was it a couple of years ago Farrah had their breakout that big, that good year? Yeah, yeah, it'd be two years ago now, maybe three. You know, how long were, how long ago were these guys getting two-year deals? You know, maybe, yeah. maybe they're in the same situation two years ago and they had a cracking year. Um, Moses what, looks like it? a different player. It's It's bizarre. Let, let's just keep an eye. Watch that space for this one. Let's go to topic number four. Uh, full ba- All right. Obviously, Teddy at the moment, a lot of people are talking about him. RTS, Turbo. From a Supercoach point of view, mate, who's the best fullback at the moment? 
Oh, it has to be. Oh, that's a tough one. I think it's, you know, RTS or Teddy. Um, and you've got Ponga that's probably putting his hand up in the last month or so as well. Oh, for me, I think this year you'd have to say super coach points wise it had it'd have to be RTS, but I think yeah, in my opinion the best the best fullback's Teddy. But, you know, how lucky are we to have those three guys to watch Let, every let's week? Let's say let's say Turbo's fit. Teddy V oh. Turbo. Oh. Who do you say? Oh. oh man, that's a really hard question. Um, I, I I take uh, look from from my point of view. I take Turbo because he's in a worse team. So basically, what I mean by that is mainly rely on Turbo more to score the points for him to basically have an impact. Whereas the Roosters can easily win games without Teddy having an impact. Yeah, fair play, fair play. And I I think like Teddy just looks like uh, you know like he's. He's, they're different, obviously very different fullbacks, all four of them if you, if you include Ponga and RTS. But Teddy Turbo in particular, I think Turbo is the one that makes things look the easiest. He's, a, he's much more effortless in what he does. He's, you know, it's just it's just the build him. He's about twenty thousand foot tall and um, he's hard to tackle. He takes two strides and he's he's run fifty meters. So I don't know. I just like watching watching Turbo on full flight probably a little bit more as well, actually. Fair enough. Uh, topic number five, what do we got? The real de- Now, obviously, we talked about Cameron Murray a little bit earlier. I do think he's been the best player in Supercoach this season. I don't think he's flashy. I don't think he's a big guy. Um, but the fact is that the points and consistency is what I look for in Supercoach. I love guys like this. Haven't had him all season, that being said. Uh, and I'm sort of kicking myself because he was in a lot of my draft team of what when I say draft teams, the teams that I sort of created heading into round one and was hoping to have didn't end up going with him. Uh, mate, have you had him at all? Yeah, I, I was. that was one of the probably luckier picks I started with him for the year. So I've had him all year. You know, there was that expectation he might get some big minutes, but he hasn't. He's pretty much hovering between 60 to 65 minutes generally each week, more around closer to that 60. Uh, his base has been <laughs> really good some weeks, but you know, forty odd in other weeks. So he's the thing is, he keeps get, he seems to just keep getting a line break here or there. So I was sort of thinking he's more realistically probably going to score forty to fifty each week. But you know, that, that's fact, one thing I want to yeah. talk about, and we've talked about it before, is how many minutes is too many minutes, right? You you look at blokes like Viliami Kikau, who potentially have so much attacking ability, right? Now, Cameron Murray, he's not a big body, so you don't really sort of see him in that light. But the fact is that these guys, if they're playing 80 minutes, like if if Cameron Murray's out there as an 80-minute player, he's out there to be an 80-minute defensive player. Mm. If you play him for 55 or 60, does that mean during that spell he worries more about what can I do in attack and to benefit the team from that point of view as well as defending my ass off for 60 minutes? Like. I think there's actually a benefit to players that play that don't play 80. I think their ceilings are higher. I think the consistency or the defensive ability means the 80-minute player is sort of always going to score you 55 to 65. But I don't think then they've got the energy levels to concentrate on attack to maybe turn up every now and then. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. It's that sort of quality over quantity thing, isn't it? And with Murray in particular, I think he might actually be really underrated as a not so much a ball player, but, you know, a guy that hits good lines and, you know, um, pops up in the right place. It's it's not an accident. I think he, that because he's just, he's not much of, there's not much of him, he's only 21 years old, but I think he could be really underrated as, as a bit of a an attacking weapon, as we're seeing this year, maybe. Um, I'm expecting it to dry up, but it just he just keeps on popping up in the right place. Um Gerbo has a bit of a habit of it as well. He doesn't look like much. He hasn't done it a great deal this year, but he's always good for a, you know, one of those good short balls to someone else for a try or just popping up and scoring a try. Uh, maybe he's another one of those. Definitely, definitely. Uh, what do we got next topic, Bogan? Broncos in the bin. Obviously, look, mate, we talked about um, last week the Broncos, whether they could still make the eight from being one and five. They give the Sharks a touch-up, obviously injury depleted. 
but a touch-up nonetheless. Cody Nicarima to the Warriors. James Roberts to the Bunnies. Young kids in the front row that, yeah, or, or in the forward pack that are inconsistent purely because of their age and they yeah, haven't had much exposure to NRL level as yet. Um, mate, what is the go with the Broncos? Is obviously Wayne Bennett leaving completely screwed these guys. I don't know. I still think they got probably the best young pack in the comp. Um, you know, I'm reading that they think McCulloch, if McCulloch doesn't start hooker this week, I'll be surprised. I still think maybe Boyd's just not. You need impact from your fullback, and I think maybe Boyd's just not giving them that venom they need at times. At the fullback chiming in, you know, he's those ball playing. He's getting a bit older. He's not. He's not hitting lines and running holes like you look at some of the good teams and the good fullbacks. He's not the same. Same, the game's changing. Um, but I seriously think they need you know, a good game manager, someone with a good kicking game, making the right decisions at certain points of the game about what they're doing. Um, is it going to be this young bloke? I, I wouldn't have thought so, but you know, he could be beyond his years potentially. It'd be really interesting to see how he goes. But um, I still uh, think it's, it's maybe the one in the seven. Number seven, uh, Parramatta Eels. Now, this sort of connects back into what we were talking about with King Gutho. Uh, contracts, everything... Basically, they've got 17, 18, 19 players, I think, that are off contract this year. Yeah, um, that's an unbelievable stat, isn't it? Oh, look. Again, I mean, the Eels in past years, they've had a few issues at, at you know board level and things like that. Um, I, I just don't know. I just don't know whether the fact that a player's off contract makes him play better and be more hungry for it. We saw, obviously... I think there was the DCE saga with the Gold Coast Titans, him getting offered big money for long term. Tamalolo's on 10 years, a million a season. I mean, does that make these guys complacent? Does it make them not hungry enough to be to be better, to, to improve from week to week? Um, you know, any, any professional sports person wants to be the best, but do you then have that work ethic to make you that or do you sort of leave it behind? Yeah, it's an issue, man. At the end of the day, whilst they're still professional athletes, they're still human beings, and at times you've got to get comfy, don't you? There might be that the exception there with you guys like Cameron Smiths and Cronks and Slaters and Lolos and you know that do want to be the best and leave a legacy, but there's a plenty of there that I'm sure are just happy getting be paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to be playing footy, and you'll, you'll take it easy at times. And uh, topic number eight, uh, last one here. Legacy concessions. Now, obviously the AFL, mate, they've got um, same clubs, you know, father, son. Um, you can basically get some concessions with the salary cap. Now, with the talk around the salary cap moving maybe to a point system or or whether that would work or not, um, mate, moving to this sort of things, do you think clubs, if they have a father and son combination that uh, play for the same club, should get a concession? Well, I probably don't. I don't get it as much as I'd probably get junior development i'd rather see concessions for if you're bringing juniors through like i know the father son thing is kind of cool and that you're keeping that that family tied to the club and it's a good look for the game and you know if i think i i just think we'd be better off rewarding clubs that develop their own juniors and you know from us if they've stayed in that system for a certain amount of time and they get concessions that way that being said, you probably give there's some advantages to some clubs straight away. You get a bit more of an advantage from that, but if it's promoting development, other clubs that aren't doing it to start doing it and spending money in it, it can only be a good thing. But uh, I'm not sure on the father son as much as that junior stuff. What do you reckon, mate? Look, I, I probably support that point. I hadn't sort of thought about the junior side of things before, and I think that's one of the biggest things you see in football is these cultures at clubs that, that breed these kids and breed the better players um, getting poached purely because they can't afford to keep these guys. I think uh, from a Cronulla point of view, we've seen in the past, you know, blokes like, um, you know, you, they talk about obviously Bronson Cherry and, and, you know, guys like that who came through the ranks. I think Josh Adokar was in Cronulla's sort of junior list at, at one stage as well, whether you can sort of keep those guys. Mate, yeah, look, I'd like to see them be some sort of allowance for both. I would like to see, you know, teams not be disadvantaged by what they create, whether it is a, a history point of view or whether it's a current point of view through juniors. So, mate, yeah, what, I, look, I don't think it should be a massive salary cap concession. 
you know, but maybe sort of 10 or 20 percent. You know, these, these guys, if they're on 500,000 a year, well, then 50,000 or 100,000 doesn't go towards the salary cap just to give them that benefit. What about? Uh, I want to hear what the what the Bogan has to say about the, the father son concessions and. I'm all for it. I'm actually all for the junior concessions too. I would also put a long service concession in. So if you had a player that was in a father son uh, legacy, was a junior of that club, and say played ten years for that club, I wouldn't have a problem if the majority of his salary wasn't counted in the cap. I'm a, a bit older than you guys. I really miss the days of club men, and you don't really see it very often anymore. Obviously, you pointed out some ex- exceptions, some um, Cam Smiths and, and things like that. But I just, as I said, it's an old, old man, a boomer thing coming through. I'd, I'd really like to see the players really incentivized to stick with a club from um, the start of their career right until the end again. Uh, I think the game is really missing that. And it seems to be, like, as a supporter, it's a cardinal sin to change the team that you support, ever. You pick a team when you're a kid, essentially, or you support the local team, and you support them for life. But how are we expecting the fans to do that if the players aren't incentivized to stick with a team for life? So I think there's things that we could do with the salary cap that could bring that um, that club identity and that uh, really having a personal connection to the club back into the game, which I think has, has diminished a little bit over the past couple of years. Mate, fair, fair call. Man. Fair call. Um, look, let's uh, wrap it up. Let's go, obviously, over to the, the BJ and Game Day League, um, and that uh, should kick us off. Now, obviously, last week, uh, massive score from Big Ted, uh, 1,213, led the league. Well done, Big Ted. Uh, mate, the Bunning snags. They just keep keeping on, don't they? Uh, silver medal this week out of the 20 players in our league. Solid score of 1168. And uh, actually moved into the top 1,000, Charlie White. So, uh, well done, Mr. Charles. Charlie White, what a name. And, uh, yeah, look at him. There he is on top, 7,979 points. 120 points clear of... Uh, Rangers de Janeiro overall. So um, he's starting to sort of distance himself a little bit, Charlie. So he's doing well. And, uh, mate, I reckon he's just going to keep trending up. We, we've talked about it. He's got a, a solid team. Uh, he's looking pretty good. Uh, Blake continues on in second there. Rangers de Janeiro. He's been near the top of the tree the whole season. And uh, the ever-consistent Mana was checkmate. Uh, very, very solid scoring from Mana. Um, I'm up against him this week, actually. I, I checked early because I was uh, – Pretty keen to see who I was playing. And uh, oh, I always worried when I play blokes like him because, you know, they're going to be uh, fairly consistent, their teams. Uh, from a head-to-head point of view, uh, we've got Blake still on top, Rangers de Janeiro. He is uh, undefeated still. And then you've got Big Ten and the Bunning Snags at 4-1. and one. So um, a couple other guys, I think, are 4-1 and one as well or near enough to it. I'd just like to point out, from a head-to-head point of view, Points scored against, which means you've played the hardest teams out of everyone else. Who's on top? Yours truly, Psycho Circus. 7,000 points scored against me. It's ridiculous. Everyone they you play me, me, they decide you've to me, score one. You? Yeah, but I beat you. You're, you're not much good. And Tunnel Stakes, you're not much better. They're the two wins I've had. Because I have played Muppets you. like you two. I beat you. That's you why you, you dressed like... Oh, that's right. I had... Oh, let's... You... Idiot. Let's not go there. That's <laughs> right. You beat me, didn't you? Right. I, I retract. I retract my former statement. <laughs> um, last week's results, as you can see them there on the screen, uh, Blakey defeated Kaloy. Uh, a draw. First draw of the season there. Uh, Brendo's team and uh, Pete Top, Kevin Bottom, still haven't found out what that team means, but uh, don't know whether we want to. We're a child-friendly uh, program here. Um, Big Ted. He was pretty dirty, Big Ted. He, he, he lashed out a little bit on Facebook. Uh, he is absolutely pissed off at this Brendan Blake. Whoever Brendan's bashes are, um, give yourself a, an uppercut because uh, you're letting our uh, league down. We're, we're sort of mm. ranked around that sort of 1,500 because you're averaging 700 a week, you prick. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> and obviously, mate, right, right, um, right. Quite, fitting, quite fitting that Big Teddy topped the league last week after... Dedicated the round to um, his late brother, which is yeah. unfortunately good on Teddy. 
Um, massive, massive week there for him. So good stuff, bud. Keep going, buddy. I need a rest. Yep, so I cannot actually see the screen. It's still on O oh, Captain, my captain for me. So we're moving on to fixtures for next week, I'd imagine. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, basically, let's move on to the fixtures next week. I'll, I'll run it, everything. Was it head to heads? Was it head to head results from last week? All the head to heads? Head to head results from last yeah, week. Okay, so yeah. We've got Leanne Fire and Ice Beat Hell's Grannies. Uh, Ginger, the Ginger got you, mate. He beat you by about 50 points last week. Uh, switch the page there. What have we got? Oh, what's a pod? Scored bang on a thousand. Pretty average week from him. So um, he beat the threat. Another non player, Stuart. Piss off as well. Uh, Psycho Circus. Legendary performance there, beating the Tunnel Snakes. Uh, fucking Cowboys beat Marty's team. Two blokes from last year. Marky mm. with the fucking Cowboys and Marty. Uh, but both good scores there. Marty still scored 1,092, so fairly solid. Uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, next week's fixtures. Leanne uh, got her first win of the year, mate, too. Leanne, she did. Fire she got off ice. the bottom of the ladder. Scored quite well, 11.32, as you can see there. So uh, congratulations, Leanne. And uh, no doubt she'll be on a march up the ladder too. So everyone performing quite well, I think. Uh, fixtures next week. What have we got? Any matches? I'm sure, I'm sure Big Teddy's filthy about that plus 500 he's got out of the batches, batches in the head to head this week too. He'd be loving it. him up by 500 points. That for and against, it just climbs you straight up the ladder. He's got Rangers de Janeiro this week, Big Ted. That'll be a tough one for him. Good Blake, clash, he's had yeah. a really solid side, so that'll be a, a very, very good clash. Top of the table, actually. Top of the table clash. 5-0, oh, Rangers de Janeiro up against Big Ted, 4-1. Um, what else have we got there? Bunning Snags against Brendan Bashes. Well, there's a 4 and against booster. Uh, let's switch the page. Uh, who else have we got? So, okay, so who am I? Oh, I'm playing Sheck, mate. Yeah, he's going to beat me. Ping Ponger. Who you got? Fucking Cowboys. So, a bit of a, a match there from last week. Uh, Tunnel Snakes. Bogan's got uh, Hell's Grinnies. Wayno. Oh, that'll be that'll be a tight one, actually. Wayno has been a bit up mm. and down this season. One week he'll score 1,200, and then he's 1,000. So, Tunnel Snakes. Bogues might be a chance. And then uh, Leanne, Fire and I, should be up against Big Ginger from... Uh, New Zealand. Apparently, Big Ginger and Big Ted go back way back. The the, the Big Ginger, he's a he's a massive unit. Him and uh, him and Teddy know each other across the ditch. So, get out of those boys over there. Uh, once we get past that, what have we got left? Nothing. Outro. That's it. I think we're on another hour video there. So, what's the score tonight? I oh, can't see. I'm down. Thirty six twenty eight. Who am I playing? It's one oh one. Bone's gone missing. I don't know. Anyway, that's all right. I'm used to losing. Anyway, guys, that's it. BJ and Game Day, <coughs> another week. Um, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Uh, comment. Give us some comments. Give us some questions. Obviously, we get the same guys every week. Big Ted's always on it. Marty's on it. Uh, plenty of other lads as well. Geo, I, I want to know who these guys are and, and whether we can get them in the comp next year whether Geo's part of this season or, or we can get him in next season um, and a few of the others as well. Amy, we talked to last week on uh, YouTube uh, and told her to get in Corey Waddell, so uh, good call there. And uh, I think she followed our advice and won her head-to-head, so uh, pretty stoked there. Uh, if you're on Twitter, jump onto Twitter and follow BJ on Game Day uh, and the Facebook page is there as well. So uh, we're all over it. Absolutely, mate. Um, good stuff. Again this week. Good luck to everyone. May the trade gods be kind and see you all next week. See you guys.